It's Two Girls, One Pod. It's my solo app. It's a Tuesday. When do you listen? Do you listen to it as soon as it comes out? Do you get a notification? Like, how does it work for you? Do you listen to it when you're dropping the kids off? Do you listen to it when you're dropping the kids off to the pool? You're completely different dropping kids off. I'd love to be on the toilet with you. Let me know. I mean, don't get too graphic, but please, you know me, nothing shocks me. So shock me. No, don't, don't shock me. Don't make anything up. Anyway, hope you had a good long weekend. Not sure how you spent it. My invasion day was spent with dogs. Of course. <laughs> what else is in Evie's life? Got a new dog. He's adorable. We ended up with a like a little bunch that came. They often do come from the puppy farms, all different ages. But we have one of them, only eight weeks old, is blind. So I couldn't take him because I have a pond and it's not good for dogs, especially if they can't see said pond. Um, but I did take one and I ended up choosing, which I never get to do, the names because they never come with names. We've always go with TV shows and I've gone because there was five of them and four of them were boys. I said, let's do Seinfeld. So I've got Jerry, Joe's got Kramer. We've also got Elaine, George and Newman. <laughs> I got a Newman because we had to have a fifth one. I was like, is there a fifth? And it actually made me realise because um, we didn't know if the fifth one was going to be a boy or a girl. And Joe said, what if it's a girl? What what other character in Seinfeld that was known as a girl or woman? I was like, you know what? I had a good think about it. Elaine was it. I mean, even Newman downstairs was a man. There was no other, you know, main character. Don't even. Let's not. What have we got today? We've got a female shemale from a woman called Nikki. I love that name, Nikki. Such a great name. Do you know Nikki Britton? If you don't, well, then go back and listen to her the episode I did with Nikki Britton and then go and follow her because I think she's one of the just the best humans that exist. I, I adore her. I adore her pants off. So from Nikki. Hey Evie. Hey Nikki. I don't know if this is Nikki Britton. I'm gonna say it isn't. <laughs> it's weird. She's sending me an email when she could just be sending me a DM. I love listening to the podcast and hearing all the amazing women you chat to. Well, Nikki was one of them, Nikki. So there you go. Thank you. I hope you listened to that one. In particular, I love the open conversations you've had with people surrounding mental health and how that's normalizing it. It is, isn't it? That was me. I added that. Um, I was wondering what would you do to help protect your mental health? I know you've spoken about having fatigue and managing your workload to suit your life best, but is there any other practices or advice you have for someone who might be having a low mental health day? Say hi to Sissy and Autumn for me. Love, Nikki. Hey, sis, Autumn. Nikki says hi. Literally, she said hi. It wasn't a hey, it was a hi. Uh, mental health. F it just seems it doesn't end. Like it's like, oh, I'm better now. Oh, no, I'm not. <laughs> it's like your mental health goes, psych, bitch. <laughs> just joking. I'm not going anywhere ever. So with that said, don't try to make it go anywhere. Accept it. I mean, this is only my advice. Accept it and make friends with it as the feeling that it is, as the syndrome that it is, as the disorder that it is, as the disease that it is. I don't know, mental health disease, mental illness, that it is an illness. Name it if you have to, you know, dickheads here today. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe be kind to it. I, I think it really does help for me to accept it more than try to shift it or move it. There was a great poem that I read maybe 25 years ago and it really helped me. It was back in the day when someone had it in a book there was no internet. <laughs> Someone actually gave me a printout of it and I've read it many, many times and it always seems different things. Sometimes I'll think it's from a lover to a lover or a friend to a friend. Sometimes I think it's from you to yourself. Other times I think 
it's to a higher being or it's from a higher being. So um, I'll just read you a little bit of it because it's pretty long. I'll put it in the show notes if you want to read it or just click on it. It's um, called The Invitation by Oriah Mountain Dreamer. I know. Anyway, it doesn't interest me what you do for a living. I want to know what you ache for and are you dare to dream of meeting your heart's longing. So it goes on a bit like that and I'll let you read that for yourself. The part that I like is when it says, I want to know if you can sit with pain, mine or your own, without moving to hide it or fade it or fix it. I want to know if you can be with joy, mine or your own, if you can dance with wildness and let the ecstasy fill you to the tips of your fingers and toes without cautioning us to be careful, to be realistic, to remember the limitations of being human. There's so much in it and it's just such an incredibly beautiful piece of writing. And every time you read it, just like when I read The Alchemist by Paolo Coelho, which I do every year, you get something new from it. These tiny fables or poems that seem so simple and short, every time you read them, you get something different out of it. So I often think about that particular phrase, can you sit with pain, mine or your own? without trying to fix it, fade it, or shift it. There's also another saying that a lot of people use, no feeling is final. And I think that helps with suicide ideation because, you know, when you're in these moments of I just want it to go away, I want it to end, I mean, that is such an incredibly hard thing to to deal with. And I know this is a really heavy topic, but it happens to so many of us. If you can just sit with it, know that no feeling is final and if you sit with it and maybe have a chat with it and say, hey, you okay? Not not you okay, you, it. What's going on? Why are you here today? Honour it. It's there for a reason. It's telling you to either slow down or look at things differently or, you know, just sit in a pool of shit for a while. I call it a poo pool and sometimes you just sit in poo pools. You know some people just sit in poo pools all the time and it's like, oh, you're sitting in your poo pool. Oh, get out of your poo pool. Sometimes you have to get out of your poo pool and wash your shit off. Other people just sit in their poo pools for a while. Other people can't literally get out of their shit pools. That's the difference. So, Don't try too hard to shift it or fix it or fade it because it will go on its own. Sometimes you need medication. Sometimes you need therapy. Sometimes you need both. Most of the time you need both. But know that it will leave and it will come back again. So when it leaves, don't fool yourself in thinking it's gone forever because you really are setting yourself up for a major letdown and it can be worse when it comes back. So instead, live with it, sit with it and say, hey, you're here today. What's that all about? (laughs) Oh, I need to spend a day in bed, do I? Because when you do ask why it's there, it'll tell you. You know, I feel despair today. I feel hopeless today. The world's a bin fire. You know, my family's shit. My friends don't love me. I don't know why, it might say. I don't know why I'm here, but I'm here. And I just want you to sit with me for a bit. And I'd like to stay in bed today. Or I'd like to sit on the edge of my bed and just stare at a wall for about an hour in a towel. (laughs) After I've got you out of the shower and we're about to go out. Well, guess what? I don't want to go out. Can we not? Can we take the towel off and just jump into bed with no clothes on and wet hair and and then when you get up, your hair's halfway up the wall? Can we have that day today? And you say, yeah. You know, I think about people who have kids that have this happen and they don't have that option. This is why it's so incredibly important to be partnered if you are partnered with someone that supports you as much as you support them when these kind of things happen to them. If you are not partnered, friends, family, or phone calls 
to people that you don't know, people who are professionals at these kind of things. I think some people don't have anyone to say, I need a day in bed today, can you look after my kids? Or can you look after my elderly mum, you know, who I'm a carer for and I'm exhausted? And I really feel for those people. So if if you are those people, I'm so sorry. If you're not those people and you know people around, rally. Know that you can help, you know, someone that you may not even know that you can help an hour or two. Why don't you go to bed for a minute? Why don't you go out and have a haircut? Why don't you go shopping by yourself without the kids pulling everything off the bottom shelf of every aisle you walk down? That's why grandparents are the best because they enjoy having the kids letting you be your own person again. Mental illness, mental health, depression, anxiety. Another big one also coming up soon, we've got the Dr. Louise Newson episode. We talk all about hormones. A lot of these things are triggered by low hormones. So if you can take hormones that are depleted in your body, please do that. Sometimes you can take supplements that support hormones so they get your hormones to work a bit better when you do have them. But, you know, some people can't afford that kind of thing. So I really wish that both Big Pharma and the natural medicine industries were not such capitalist societies because they both charge a lot of money to make us feel better. Oh, wouldn't that be nice if that shit was free? Remember once upon a time yoga was just the thing you did in India and then it became a Western thing and everyone started charging really expensive dollars to um, learn how to do it? I always think about that now. The Indians must laugh at us going, what do you mean you pay for it? <laughs> All right, well, that's me. I hope I hope it helped somehow. I don't know if it did. Thank you for writing me, asking me. I'm no professional. So that's just Evie's advice. I do always say seek professional help. You may not find the right one for a while though. Don't give up. Don't give up on yourself. Don't give up on the help. Um, And if you ever need to talk, just let me know. We can have a chat. You know, I've got a secretary. I'll sit down. I'm just joking. I'm just joking. This Thursday coming out is my episode with Dr. Louise Newson. Oh, excited. Yep, I am. Please don't miss it. Set your alarms. Hit subscribe if you don't already. Make sure that it comes up in your feed because you don't want to miss it. You really don't want to miss it. I love you. I'll speak to you soon. Have a good week. Sorry, I burped.